Income Tax 2022-2023 Combination Accounting Method Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it most of this information comes from the tax guide for small business for individuals who use schedule c publication 334 tax year 2022 you can find it on the irs website irs.gov irs.gov looking at the income tax formula we're focused on line one income remember in the first half of the income tax formula is in essence an income statement although it's just an outline and a scaffolding other forms and schedules flowing into it for example the schedule c the business income which is in essence an income statement in and of itself income minus expenses the net then net income flowing into the income line of the income tax formula this is the first page of the form 1040 the schedule c would flow into the schedule one which would then flow into the first page of the 1040 here on line 8. This is the Schedule C, profit or loss from business, where we can see we have an income statement in essence, income minus the expenses or business deductions. So we're continuing on with our discussion of accounting methods. Remember, the two methods you want to keep in mind are going to be the cash method and then the accrual method. Most other methods can be thought of as kind of a combination between the two. In other words, those two methods aren't really opposites from each other because you can think of a method where you're basically using pieces ah, you used a piece lost. of an accrual method and a cash method. And even if you're on a cash method, you're going to be forced even then to use some accrual concepts as we discussed when you're doing like capitalization of property, plant and equipment, for example. Also note that you want to make sure that you get your accounting method properly recorded when you first set up your Schedule C on the first tax return because although you have a pretty fairly wide leeway to pick the accounting method you want to use once chosen it's difficult to change the accounting method because the irs wants consistency with the accounting method if you were to change the accounting method going back and forth from a cash to an accrual method then you can kind of manipulate the timing of the income and expenses and you can try to do some tax manipulation in that case so the irs wants to limit that by saying you can choose what methods you want but then in essence you keep to that method and of course there are some circumstances where the iris might uh, require say an accrual method in some cases uh, for example all right so now we're on a combination method so you can generally use a combination of cash accrual and special methods of accounting if the combination clearly shows your income and expenses and you use it consistently so the consistency is once again the key component here however the following restrictions apply if an inventory is necessary to account for your income you must generally use an accrual method for business and sales so in other words the inventory if you're dealing with inventory you've got to be careful on the method that you're going to choose because you might be able to kind of be under the threshold where you have to, you're required to report on a accrual method but generally you may be required to report on an accrual method if you have inventory because reporting inventory is an accrual thing meaning when you buy the inventory if you if you were on a cash method you would just expense it when you buy it but if you're holding on to a substantial amount of inventory it makes sense to put it on the books as an asset and putting it on the books as an asset is an accrual type of thing we then expense it when we sell the inventory in the form of the cost of goods sold so that would that would mean that you would have to kind of account for that uh inventory situation on an accrual basis generally so that we can match up the cost of the inventory that was sold usually the biggest expense if you're just buying and selling inventory with the time frame that you earned the revenue otherwise what would happen is you might have bought the inventory 
you know, last year or two years ago, and then you, if you expensed it two years ago, you're not matching the expense of the inventory to the to the revenue that was generated in the current year when you actually sold the inventory. That's the idea. We want to match those two things up uh, generally. So you can use the cash method for all other items of income and expenses. So notice that you might that's kind of a hybrid kind of method where you can see that would be practical in a lot of uh, small businesses because a lot of the the expenses that you have for small businesses you might try to rely on bank feeds for example in order to record them so you have electronic transfers you might try to set up your quickbooks file or something like that so that you can record all the outflows with basically bank feed uh, type of transaction which is in essence uh, a cash based kind of system so then uh, if you use cash method for figuring your income, you must use the cash method for reporting uh, your expenses. So you've got to be matching. The idea here is that we want to be matching the income and the expenses in the same time period. In other words, the income that you consumed money, 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 money. should be matched to the revenue that that you consumed it to generate. You know, that's that's the matching principle, which the accrual is better at doing than the cash based system but you want some consistency with those methods if you if your method is is altering them more than a cash based system to be out of whack you would think that would not be typically good from a bookkeeping standpoint and not what the IRS is is looking for here either I would think so if you use an accrual method for reporting your expenses you must use an accrual method for figuring your income so if you use a combination method that includes cash method treat the combination method as the cash method now note this gets a little bit confusing because a lot of times when people think of the difference between a cash method and a and an accrual method we kind of think that every transaction is going to be different between an a cash and accrual uh, and an accrual method so in other words like if you set up your expenses like a lot of small businesses do to be paying when they clear the bank when you do an electronic transfer you could say okay that's clearly a cashed method in that you're letting the transfer of the cash drive when you're going to be recording it but if you recorded that transaction on an accrual based method you would mainly have the same transactions there in other words if you paid the phone bill because and you paid it through a bank feed when you paid the phone bill then you would record the expense at the point in time you paid it based on a cash based method but you would also be recording it at the point in time you paid it generally because it's pretty close to the time that you consumed the use of the phone on an accrual based method it's just for different reasons on a cash based method you would be recording it at that point in time because you paid the cash on an accrual method you would be recording the expense at that point in time because it's close to the point in time that you actually consumed the consumption of using uh the 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 telephone it's only when those two things are not uh connected they're not close to each other that you're going to have basically a difference in reporting of the timing of the expenses and a similar kind of thing on the income side okay so continuing on inventories generally uh if you produce purchase or sell merchandise in your business you must keep an inventory and use an accrual method for purchase and sale of merchandise so as we saw the inventory is often an issue because it's an accrual component when you put it on the books as an asset instead of just expensing it when you pay for it you're doing an accrual thing when you record the expense of cost of goods sold when you sell the inventory as opposed to when you bought the inventory you are once again doing an accrual type of thing from an income statement side of things we want to be matching up the revenue that was generated from the sale of inventory and the expense the cost of goods sold of the inventory so uh exception for small business taxpayers so if you are a small business taxpayer you can choose not to keep an inventory but you must still use a method of accounting for inventory that clearly reflects income so if you choose not to keep an inventory you won't be treated as failing to to clearly reflect income in your method of accounting for infant uh for inventory treats inventory as non-incidental material or supplies or conforms to your financial accounting treatment of inventories so however if you choose to keep an inventory you must generally use an accrual method of accounting and value the inventory each year to determine your cost of goods sold in part three of schedule c so note that if if you're in a situation where you sell stuff but really you you kind of buy stuff 
uh, in particular or in a just-in-time type of system or in part of your your job cost system you buy inventory and then you consume it and you you build something or you sell it right away that would mean that you're not really holding on to inventory at that at that point and if you're in a small business you might be able to do your accounting even though you're selling inventory without tracking an asset of inventory right you could basically in essence, expense the inventory as cost of goods sold when you purchase it because you purchased it close to the point in time that you are that you are actually going to sell it, sell the inventory. So it's still those two things: the income and, and the expense of cost of goods sold should still be close in the same time frame because you're not really holding on to the inventory. If, however, you are holding on to inventory, you have to track the inventory. Then clearly you can't really avoid that situation. So, so you'd have to use basically an accrual method. You would think in that case. Now, if you're using an, an accrual method, you've got to. You can see this part three of the Schedule C, which is basically a cost of goods sold calculation. You're going to have to figure out, which sometimes can be a little bit tricky, because it's kind of a perpetual inventory calculation of the cost of goods sold. The formula, you, you may know the formula. It's going to be beginning inventory which is the ending inventory it should match the ending inventory from the prior tax year plus the purchases which you purchase for inventory minus the ending inventory which is probably something that you have on records you might not have the purchases and you might back into the purchases and that will equal the cost of goods sold and oftentimes if you use accounting software you might know the cost of goods sold as well right so you might back into in essence the purchases using using algebra uh, in some cases to fill out that part three of the schedule C. So small business taxpayers, you qualify as a small business taxpayer if you A, have average annual gross receipts of $27 million or less for the three prior, uh, prior tax years and B, are not a tax shelter as defined in section 448D3. If your business has not been in existence for all of the three tax year period used in figuring average gross receipt, base your average on the period it has existed. And if your business has a predecessor entity, include the gross receipt of the predecessor entity from the three tax year period when figuring average gross receipts. If your business or pre predecessor entity had had short tax years for any of the three year period analyze your business gross receipt for the short tax year that are part of the three year period you can see publication 538 for more information if you want to drill down on that uh, treating inventory as non-incidental material or supplies so if you account for inventories as materials and supplies that are not incidental you deduct the amounts paid or incurred to acquire or produce the uh, inventoriable items treated as non-incidental materials and supplies in the year in which they are first used or consumed in your operations. Inventory treated as non-incidental materials and supplies is used or consumed in your business in the year you, you provide the inventory to your customers. So financial accounting treatment of inventories. Your financial accounting treatment of inventories is determined with regard to the method of accounting you use in your applicable financial statement. So, you, you know, again, the general idea is that they want you to kind of follow what you're doing on the books side, side of things. Now, obviously, if you're a small business and you're reporting on a Schedule C, it's not like you're a publicly publicly traded company that's creating financial statements that are required for external reporting to investors. So the only so you might not be reporting obviously external financial statements if you're small business on a Schedule C unless you need something like a loan or financing or something like that. But the general idea is that you're you know you're, the system you're using for the bookkeeping that would be used to create your financial statements would generally be kind of the system that you would use for for your your taxes in terms of an accrual method cash method or a combo so for financial accounting treatment of inventories uh, is determined with regard to the method of accounting you use in your applicable financial statement as defined in section 451b3 or if you do not have an applicable financial statement with regard to the method of accounting you use in your books and records that have been prepared in accordance with your accounting procedures so changing your method of accounting for inventory so what about if i if i need to change it and possibly that may happen if you're on a cash-based method and you're saying 
I think it might be more appropriate for me to be on an accrual-based method given the fact that I have inventory and possibly that that inventory has increased or something like that. So if you want to change your method of accounting for inventory, you must file form 3115, Application for Change in Accounting Method. So you gotta ask the IRS for permission. So see Change in Accounting Method later. Now you would think that if you had a rational reason for it, meaning inventory has gone up and I was on a cash-based method and I think the inventory has gone up to the point where it would be more appropriate for me to use an accrual method, at least with regards to the inventory sales and whatnot, then you would think they would accept that kind of, of rationale. If you just were like, whatever, willy-nilly, I just want to change it because I want to change it kind of thing, then they might argue you would think for consistency. So, consistency. Uh, so items include an inventory. So if you are required to account for inventories, include the following items when accounting for your inventory. So you got the merchandise or stock and trade. Obviously, if you just buy stuff, mark it up and sell stuff, the stuff you're buying and planning to sell is inventory. And then we got the raw materials. So if you're gonna, the other kind of inventory situation we have is one in which we're gonna be making things, either using a job cost system or a process cost system oftentimes, where we're gonna buy raw materials, we're gonna start to work on them, work in process, and then we'll have the finished goods that are putting the raw materials together with our overhead and our, our uh, labor. Work in process, that's the middle step of that manufacturing process when the finished goods aren't done. They're still kind of raw. They're not raw anymore, but they're, they're not finished either. And then you got the finished products when we converted the raw materials into that finished goods, ready to sell. Supplies that physically become a part of the item intended for sale. So value in inventory. You must value your inventory at the beginning and end of each tax year to determine your cost of goods sold, Schedule C, line 42. So we're gonna have to do that cost of sold, goods sold calculation, beginning inventory plus purchases mining, minus ending inventory equals cost of goods sold in essence, meaning that means that our beginning inventory should match what was the ending inventory in the prior tax return if we had a prior tax return for the business. In, in other words, if it's not a new business. And then we're gonna have to have the purchases, which again, might be the area that you kind of back into using algebra, uh, minus the ending inventory, which oftentimes you would determine making a physical count and just and, and using your accounting records to determine what ending inventory is equals the cost of the goods sold, which you might have in your accounting records if you're using a perpetual inventory system, for example, already to calculate the cost of goods sold, which means you can possibly back into the purchases if you need to in that condition. So to, to, to determine the value of inventory, you need a method for identifying the items in your inventory and a method for valuing these items. So usually you've got the cost, but then obviously the cost of the inventory could have changed over time, usually going down <laughs> over time. So if you're holding on to old inventory, it may not be worth what it was when you bought the inventory. You might have to use a flow assumption, first in, first out, life of weighted average. Inventory valuation rules cannot be the same for all kinds of businesses. The method you use to value your inventory must conform to generally accepted accounting principles for small business and must clearly reflect income. So your inventory practices must be consistent from year to year. Obviously that consistency, once again, something that we have to uh, be consistent with, otherwise there, would, there could be manipulation. in. so if you changed from, for example, flow assumptions first in, first out, to last in, first out, to weighted average, you can severely change the value of your inventory, and that would be manipulative, manipulative thing to do for most part. So more information, for more information about inventory, you can see publication 538.